Hey everyone and welcome to another study. So for this study we're going to be talking about the five R's of prophecy. I hope you prayed for the Spirit of Christ to lead you and you've got your Bibles open. So let's jump into our theme verses here. And the idea is beware of lukewarm Laodiceans that are stuck in this circular cycle. Proverbs 26 11, as when a dog goes to its own vomit and becomes abominable, so is a fool who returns in his wickedness to his own sin. 2 Peter 2 21, for it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But as it has happened, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to its own vomit and a sow having washed to wallowing in the mire. Philippians 3 1, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things for you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation, the old covenant keepers, the anti-typical Pharisees. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Okay, so this study is going to focus on the 70-week prophecy, because as we study this prophecy, we see a cycle start to develop. And this is the cycle for the probation for the Jewish church, but also for the anti-typical Jewish church or the Christian church that doesn't follow the truth. This is a critical prophecy. It identifies Jesus. It also, as I said, is repeated many times through Scripture, and we find it in Daniel chapter 9. I'm not going to read this entire section, but I will read the first few verses. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish a transgression, to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. So a specific duration was given. Uh, there were expectations about what was supposed to happen. They were supposed to die to self and let Christ reign in their life during this duration. And that would put an end to the sin. Okay, so let's look a little bit closer at the 490-year prophecy. Uh, scripture tells us that we should write the vision and make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. So I've kind of charted it out here. We have the 70 weeks broken down into 7 weeks, 62 weeks, and 1 week. Below that, you actually have the dates of these milestones. And then I below that, I've actually named the milestones. And we have the 5 R's, which we're going to study about for the rest of this study. It's return, rebuild, repentance, rebellion, and rejection. And this is actually a cycle. And if you look below that, I'm naming this the Laodicean Lukewarm Index. We have the people of God moving from a state of being hot and going from lukewarm to cold. So I think this is a very important aspect, and this is a cycle that's repeated often in Scripture. Uh, judgment does occur outside of this specific uh, cycle, but I don't want to get into that because it kind of uh, steps away from the 490-year prophecy a bit. So let's look at the five R's from Daniel chapter 9, the chapter that has the 490-year prophecy. So we have the idea of returning, and that's found in Daniel 9.25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. Okay, the second item, rebuild. Daniel 9.25, the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublesome times. Okay, repentance. Daniel 9.24, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness. All right, moving on to rebellion. Daniel 9, 26. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. But in the middle of the week, he will bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And then the final item, which is rejection. Daniel 9, 27. And on the wings of abomination shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation. Okay, so now that we've established the five R's, let's expand out beyond Daniel chapter 9 and look throughout all of Scripture. So first, we'll start off with return. And what are they returning from? Returning from captivity and the punishment associated with it. Genesis 15, 12. Now the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. Behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abraham, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, will serve them. They will afflict them 400 years, and also the nation whom they serve I will judge afterwards. They shall come out with great possessions. 
Isaiah 6, 11. Then I said, Lord, how long? And he answered, Till the cities are laid desolate and without inhabitant. The houses are without a man. The land is utterly desolate. The Lord has removed men far away. The forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. But yet a tenth will be in it and will return and will be for consuming or purification. As a terebinth tree or as an oak whose stump remains when it's cut down, the holy seed will be its stump. Isaiah 10, 21, The remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God. For though your people, O Israel, it be as the sand of the sea, a remnant of them will return. Zechariah 8, 4, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Old men and old women shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each one with a staff in his hand, because of great age. The streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets. So let's move on to the second phase then, which is rebuild. Now they are making the same mistakes that led to their original captivity. They are trusting in the old covenant and they have false doctrine. So Galatians 2.17, But if while we seek to be justified in Christ, we also are found sinners, is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. Ezekiel 13.10, Because indeed, because they have seduced my people, saying peace when there is no peace, and one builds a wall, and they plaster it with untempered mortar. Verse 14, So I'll break down the wall you've plastered with untempered mortar, and bring it down to the ground, so that its foundation will be uncovered. It will fall, and you shall be consumed in the midst of it. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Thus will I accomplish my wrath on the wall, and on those who have plastered it with untempered mortar. And I will say to you, the wall is no more, nor those who plastered it. Matthew 12, 1, At that time Jesus went out to the grain fields on Sabbath, and his disciples were hungry, and began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. When the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what it is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. Then the next section pertains to Nehemiah. And Nehemiah, yes, was a good man. He had good intentions, but they were flawed because he was trying to enforce the old covenant on the people. And we know that the Spirit of Christ is never associated with making people do things. Said another way, you can make people change their behaviors, but not their heart. And that's exactly what the book of Nehemiah is talking about. About. So verse 19, so it was at the gates of Jerusalem as it began to get dark before the Sabbath, I commanded the gates to be shut and charged they must not be open until after the Sabbath. Then I posted some of my servants at the gates so that no burdens would be brought in on the Sabbath day. Now the merchants and sellers of all kinds of wares lodged outside Jerusalem once or twice. Then I warned them and said to them, why do you spend the night around the wall? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. From that time on, they came no more on the Sabbath. And I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse themselves and that they should go and guard the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day. Okay, on to the next phase. Because we have rebuilding of the old truce that resulted in captivity, now there needs to be a call for repentance. Unfortunately, we know for the vast majority that call goes unheeded. Matthew 3, 7, when he saw the Pharisees and Sadducees come into his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath that come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children of Abraham from these stones. And now the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Matthew twenty-two thirty-four. 34. When the Pharisees heard it, he, si he had silenced the Sadducees. They gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him, saying, Teacher, what is a great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Matthew 12, 5, Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Yet I say to you that in this place there is one greater than the temple. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Hosea 6, 4, O Ephraim, what shall I do to you? O Judah, what shall I do to you? For your faithfulness like a morning cloud, early dew, it goes away. Therefore, I've hewn them by the prophets, I've slain them by the words of my mouth, and your judgments are like light that goes forth. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings.
Matthew 3, 1, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Acts 2, 37, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the disciples, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all as who are far off and as many as the Lord will call. On to the next stage, which is rebellion. And this rebellion comes as a result of the earlier stage, repentance is unheeded. Isaiah 38, now go write it before him on a tablet, note it on a scroll, that it may be for time to come forever and ever. This is a rebellious people, lying children, children who will not hear the law of the Lord, who say to the seers, do not see, and the prophets do not prophesy to us right things, speak to us smooth things, prophesy deceits, get out of the way, turn aside from the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Micah 3, 4, then they will cry to the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time, because they have been evil in their deeds. Thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who make my people stray, who chant peace while they chew with their teeth, but who prepare war against him. That's Jesus, who puts nothing into their mouths. John 19, 7, the Jews answered him, we have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Zephaniah 1.12, And it shall come to pass at that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish the men who are settled in complacency, Laodicea, who say in their heart, The Lord will not do good, nor will he do evil. Therefore their good shall become booty, their houses a desolation. They will build houses, but not inhabit them. They will plant vineyards, but not drink their wine. Jeremiah 18.11, Now therefore speak to the men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am fashioning a disaster and devising a plan against you. Return now every one from his evil way, and make your ways and your doings good. And they said, That is hopeless. We will walk according to our own plans, and we every one will obey the dictates of his evil heart. John 18, 39. But you have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Do you therefore want me to release you to the king of the Jews? Then they cried out to him, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Revelation 3, 15. I know your works, you're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth, because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing. Hosea 12, 7. A cunning Canaanite, deceitful scales are in his hand. He loves to oppress. And Ephraim said, Surely I have become rich. I have found wealth for myself. In all my labors they shall find in me no iniquity that is sin. Isaiah 28, 1. Woe to the crowd of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower which is ahead of the verdant valley, to those who are overcome with wine. Isaiah 22, 12, And in that day the Lord God of hosts called for weeping and for mourning, for baldness, for girding with sackcloth, but instead joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating meat and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. That leads us to the final stage, which is rejection by God. They have been rejected because they have been rebellious. They are not profitable for God's work any longer. Acts 7.54, When they heard the things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed at him with his teeth. But he, Stephen, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God, and said, Look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And of course, Christ standing is always in Scripture an example of his judgment. Romans 9.25, and he says also in Hosea, I will call them my people who are not my people, and her beloved who is not beloved. And it shall come to pass in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people. There they shall be called sons of the living God. Amos 9.10, All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, who say the calamity shall not overtake nor confront us. On that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and will repair its damages. I will repair its ruins, rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom, and all the Gentiles who are called by my name. Matthew 23, 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Acts 18.5 When Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and 
testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. But when they opposed him and blasphemed, he shook his garments and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From now on, I go to the Gentiles. Okay, on to the final slide here. What's the point? If Israel was bypassed, then you can be too. And this has an application not only for you personally, but also for the church you're involved with. So it has a personal and a corporate application. Hebrews 2, 1. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to these things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proves steadfast, and every transgression and disobedient receive the just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Romans eleven nineteen. You will say then, branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well said, because of unbelief they were broken off, and you stay in by faith. Do not be haughty, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he may not spare you either. Therefore consider the goodness and severity of God. On those who fell, severity, but towards you, goodness. If you continue in his goodness, otherwise you also will be cut off. And they also, if they do not continue in unbelief, will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. And I pray, brothers and sisters, that you will not be cut off. Let's learn our lesson from Israel. Die to self. Let Christ reign in us so we can escape this Laodicean cycle. Blessings to you in the name of Jesus.